all for making the time to join QuickBooks for Contractors. We have a wonderful and exciting presentation here for you today, and our speaker at Gynes is highly informed, and so we're so excited that you're here. Thank you for taking the time out of your Wednesday to come. Our presenter today is the illustrious Ed Gines. Ed is the founder of Strategic CFOs and serves as a principal consultant in the roles of CFO and controller. He is leading the accounting team at Strategic CFOs and he collaborates extensively with external tax preparers and financial professionals. This collaborative approach ensures the provision of comprehensive financial support for clients. So you guys have a very informed speaker today. Please uh, take advantage of that. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen. Let's make sure I share the right one. And voila. Let me know by those that can see by nodding their head that it, you can see a big screen that says uh, QuickBooks for contractors on the left-hand side. No? Rena, you're good? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the most important part, thank you, A. Um, switch slides very quickly is this is a dialogue not a monologue right and feel free to ask the questions i'm here to serve you in terms of what we can do to help and i'm and i'm very grateful to meriwether and williams as you can see at the bottom left i've known the company now for approximately approximately seven years could be five but I'm located here in Northern California, next to San Francisco, about an hour east. Okay. Um, a little bit about me as we go on and feel free to, there we go, there we go. Here's the agenda. Let's start with a little bit of, again, thank you for attending, provoking thoughts, right? Um, I'm going to switch slides a little bit, but we'll talk about QuickBooks. We'll talk about key features about QuickBooks. Yes, basic navigation, um, reporting analysis, and open QNIT. A dialogue, not a monologue. I'm going to switch to a different share screen. And here we go. So what you're looking at now, and please confirm that you see the words, do these sound familiar, Rena? Should, right? Fantastic, thank you. Yes. We're all, accounting is, can be a nightmare. Bear with me on a second here. Accounting can be a nightmare. And sometimes those accounting problems start to surface and you see the keywords afterwards. That's just the tip of the iceberg. It is a critical element for construction companies to make sure that these problems don't surface. Everyone wants to sleep well at night. And who wants accounting to keep you awake? And I see you, Myra. I, I think you went like this, right? So again, a dialogue. Are you guys, is anyone there bankrupts not being done? Shame on you. Is anyone applying for a loan and they can't get the reports that they want? I hate to say it again, shame on you. This is your lifestyle. This is your business. Our expenses, like taxes coming. March 15th is coming for those that have an S Corp. Need to file the, or at least get an extension and pay your estimateds, right? Cash flow, we can talk about WIP as to why it's critical. So we've got a lot to cover but I'm not gonna go very, very deep on any one of them. I try not to bore you. And then lastly, it, accounting is more than just payables and receivables and payroll. It gives you the opportunity to get insight into your company. I'm gonna go back to the agenda, so bear with me. Uh, well, before we do that, so a little bit about us, uh, let's see. And then, and then I'll drop it. Uh, who we serve, right? Is it up above? The, the website's just been revamped. So that's me. Uh, Mina is the second person here domestically in the East Bay near San Francisco. But our team of six, very 
quickly really comprises of the two of us plus, generally speaking, big four trained CPAs in the Philippines. If I'm using the word millennial right, great, but um, these guys are sharp. And so your accounting books could be sharp. We are here to give you some advice if you're interested. Now I'll, I'll go back to the presentation. And Rena, you can see agenda, yes? Fantastic, thank you. Um, key features, an introduction about me, you just kind of heard about that, but talking about QuickBooks, right? There, if there's a if there's links within the business, may it be from sales, operations, G and A, accounting, which one of those is the weakest? Because that will kill your business. And if you're paying heavy attention to the hammer and the nail, wonderful for you. If you're paying attention to building relationships to get those customers, wonderful for you. But somewhere on the chain link, if accounting is suspect, it will catch up to you. Go to the next. One more click. Here we go. There are two flavors, which I'll share with you, the one on the right as to the strength of accounting for those that you that may need it. But there are two flavors. On the left is QuickBooks Online, and it does say a few words there about it. I, I don't want to just repeat it. Millennials tend to flavor uh, favor more on the online version, <clears throat> whereas myself, uh, we prefer the older workhorse called desktop, which I'll share that screen with you and what it looks like. Um, for those that are looking for accounting capabilities, it does say access without internet, but I think it it's evolved where you can have it up in the cloud, like online. Um, in my humble opinion, the reporting is better on the right side of the screen. Online is, is a um, younger child moving its way up. But, but make that decision before. If you've already using an accounting software, here is a recommendation. Do not change. Do not, even if you're using zero or a different flavor, do not change. Because the majority of you that are using accounting software probably are not using it to its fullest benefit. And that's a lack of because you have a strength in either operational side with a hammer and nail, or you have a strength in sales and marketing and developing those relationships. But this is an art that can either propel your business, or if you don't believe in the art, it is a thorn and it will come back and haunt you. So looking at the words, know your business well before choosing an accounting software. If you already have it, stick with it and find a consultant that can help you, okay? Just depending on your needs. I'm sure you can see key features. Are there any thoughts or questions, anyone? I, I'm, I see the chat, careful, I'm a little under the weather, okay. Um, yeah, feel free. Is there a question amongst you that, because I can go very quickly and I don't wanna go all the way down and next thing you know, it's 245. A dialogue, not a monologue. Hi, Ed. Can I, I ask you a question? Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Um, so what I notice is the online version is, and I'm not sure if I'm using the right word, automated. They make a lot of suggestions or kind of guide you. Is that similar to the desktop? It, it can be, but, you know, uh, it does make suggestions. Unfortunately, how they have labeled it, Lasagna, is it make it sound like it's user friendly. And sometimes it is, but it required a lot of paying attention to the books in order to make it user friendly. Mm, okay. 
Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I can elaborate a little bit more on that. It's what you put into it. So you could do it two ways, right? We're all business people. I didn't want to pay for, quote unquote, a janitor. I did the janitorial work myself. Mm -hmm. And and so moving forward, you can do the accounting yourself, but you're going to pay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think you need a professional for sure. Yes, yes. Um, and there are some very qualified professionals. Uh, I see a new chat in there. Any other questions before we go into key features? QuickBooks for contractors. Um, I asked a question in the chat. Um, I recently heard that QuickBooks for desktop is going away at some point in time in the next uh, maybe year or two. Should we try to just learn the um, online version or should we still continue to play with the desktop if it's an option? Got it, got it. And Ada, by chance, do you already have data inside QuickBooks desktop? I don't use it, but my dad does. Okay, okay. So answering it a little bit long-winded, which is, I think, okay. I don't think it's going away anywhere. I'm not sure where that information came from. Um, the desktop version is now available up in the cloud, which we use, and you'll see it on our next screen or one of the screens. So that part is, um, no, I don't think it's going to go away. There, there's the user base. They have something in there. There's just, hey, you want to convert to online? I think the profitability on online is greater than it is for, for desktop. That could be a reason, but it, I, Intuit, which is the parent company of QuickBooks, would probably say, you know, no, we're not going to get rid of it. That's it's a big revenue stream for them. Any other thoughts or questions about before we get into key features? Yeah, I do have one quick question. I bought QuickBooks, oh my gosh, about eight, nine years ago, desktop version before the um, the online platform kicked off, are there, <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's an older version. For the desktop cloud, and I do have some data in there, is there a way to extract to the cloud and upgrade and continue with the desktop version I have, or do I have to purchase something new? Let, let me pair. Let me paraphrase, and I'm sorry because I, I don't see all the faces, and thank you. Your name is? Oh, I'm Cynthia. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. I, I, can't, I can't see the Yeah, the I name. understand. Yeah, um, Cynthia, th th that was a, um, I'm going to break down the question and maybe some comments to get your right answer. It sounds like you have desktop with data inside, and yes. that's where you say desktop on the cloud, which kind of confused me. What I'm asking is, is there any way, because of the older version of desktop, is there any way to migrate this older version into the platform for the cloud? Yes. I understand the question very well now, Cynthia. Thank you. You have two choices. If you're using the desktop version, you buy another version, 2024, and it just populates all your historical information. The lesser preferred option is migrating that information you have from the old version of desktop and moving it up to QuickBooks Online. You'll lose, you may have some attachments there. I think the reporting is better on the desktop version than on the online version. But a lot of people are saying, wait a second, I want to be out in the field. I want to be next to the to the to the construction site. I don't want to be tied to the desk. That's true. You you do have a little bit more flexibility with online with the phone. But if you have a laptop with bright networks, I'm promoting bright networks where we're at, you go straight up to the cloud and you can see your books too. So Cynthia, my recommendation until I hear more is keep the data where it is and then just get a new version of QuickBooks and that, you know, and they support it for three years. 
QuickBooks desktop. I'm sorry, a little bit more detail. Okay. So I will have to buy something new. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone needs to make money, right? A toilet breaks down and you need a new toilet, right? Um, it's the house needs repair. So we always upgrade. And it's a business model into what's in, in it for the business. One last question, and we'll go into key features. Any thoughts, concerns? Anyone else? I have a quick question. Hmm. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, OK. Um, I have, and I'd been using QuickBooks online. So my question is, um, I had to get a new tax ID, new bank account, new everything. Um, I haven't made the changeover yet for my QuickBooks. Do I have to um, like start all over again or can I use my current QuickBooks online account or because the tax ID is different um, and the bank account information is different, should I kind of be starting from scratch? I think I, there was a little glitch when you were speaking earlier, Roxanne, but I think I, I can address the question, right? It sounds like you were a sole prop there we go, confirmed, and then turned into a corporation. Uh, LLC, yes. LLC single member. Yes. Got it. Okay. You shouldn't have to do anything relative to QuickBooks online you're using? Yes. Yeah, that's a easy peasy. And you want your history still there. Okay. Yeah, no, there's, there's no adjustments. Now, mind you, I know you have a tax ID for payroll purposes, right? Yes as well as maybe some other bells and whistles uh, because contractors need that LLC, right? Um, no, don't stay right there. Stay down that vein, okay? Ed, can I add something to that? Sorry, I know she was the last one, but I had did the same thing and wasn't able to export my old information. So that was my issue. Okay. Yeah, so I was just curious about exporting my old stuff versus having two accounts. Oh, yeah. Um, and is this Lasagna who speak? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I, there's, there's a little bit of guidance that should be, because that's a major step. Mm. And just kind of saved herself a little bit of effort with a, you know, oh, my God, they're trying to upsell me on a new... QuickBooks. No, the data should be, uh, because of what I heard correctly was Schedule C converted into an LLC disregard, which is still a Schedule C. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Thank there you. we go. Uh, 324, and let's look at some key features. Again, a dialogue, not a monologue, okay? Key features. <sighs> How many of you are able to get job costing? How many are able to get your estimates and bidding done correctly so that you can look at actuals to estimates? I've got Roxanne's attention. I know. I, I wish I could see more faces. I can't. I can try. But I, I may no, lose. I don't know if you can see me. I'm, I'm, my name is Karen Martinez, and I'm with RX Plumbing. I um, have a plumbing company that started two years ago and um, I didn't know anything where to start. I didn't know the difference between a proposal, a bid. Um, so I I kind of just started using um, like Google Docs and kind of just made my own template and it worked for a little bit, but then I, I bought QuickBooks. And when I bought, bought into QuickBooks, of course, they sold me like a big packet. I was paying for payroll. And at first I thought it was, man, this is just so expensive. I, I'm not, I don't know how to utilize all these tools that are in there. I was just trying to understand it. So now I'm using QuickBooks to do like my estimates. It, it, it's just estimate. And of course, when you're in the construction field, it's called a bid but the wording says estimate, um, but I'm not utilizing these key features like job costing. Um, I didn't understand the payroll side of it. So right. that's why I'm here today to see if I can try to utilize, because I'm paying about $100 a month and 
I took out the payroll, but you know, cause we are a small business, but now that I'm going to hire, I hired now two, two of my sons that are working with us. Now I'm going to be running payroll. So hopefully it'll be something easy for me to use uh, moving forward. But I just wanted to share that thought. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you're going to go over the job costing and these features, but yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my pleasure. It sounds like you're, you, which version of, uh, Karen, which version of QuickBooks are you using? Online? I have the QuickBooks online. Okay. So the yeah. one with the Intuit and um, man, it was so hard for me to understand it when I first got it. Um, uh, like accepting the payments. Um, it, 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 it had a lot, a lot of many features that I, I didn't know how to use. Yeah. And so here's, here's the two, uh, the two extremes of the spectrum, right? When you start the business, you go, am I going to survive? That's the first one. I got to cut expenses everywhere. And Karen, as you were talking and, and I was like, oh my God, she cut payroll. And I'm like, if it was only her, it's okay. Be quiet, Ed. But if there was something you had to spend money on, you spend money to make sure you are payroll compliant, meaning third party, uh, an ADP, a paychecks internal within QuickBooks. There is accounting. Uh, there is payroll software. But yeah, don't go so cheap. Don't go so cheap. Get a hundred dollars in the big picture. So Karen, I, I don't want to ask too much about the business, but if your revenues are this big and your cost to make sure you are compliant is this, is it worth it? If your revenues are this, I get it, right? Kind of expressive my apologies, but you guys- Oh, I understand. It was, you know, to answer your question, it was- uh when we first started, it was just my, my husband and myself working the business. So it was, he's a tradesman. He's, you know, he's the, the tradesman, the plumber. I was just his assistant. So that feature of the payroll, I wasn't using it. I didn't think I had to use it to pay him a paycheck, but now I realize it, it would have been important for me to, to pay him, but I just didn't know how to use it. And so moving forward, I am looking to add it back on. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost another couple hundred a month, I think, to add it back mm -hmm. on. But I'm, I think I was trying to compare it with other companies out there. I've been hearing about ADA, Gustos, and I think okay. there's another couple companies that do payroll. But yeah, it's all about being compliant. And also another thing, sorry, sorry, guys. Um, I get a lot of prevailing wage jobs. So the taxing, I didn't understand that. And um, yeah, basically I've never done payroll in my life. So it's hard. It's, and I just want to be compliant. Yeah, you, you need to, because I, hello? This I, is the IRS, right? No one wants that knock. No one wants that knock. Here, here, here's another part. Look, if you're a Schedule C, a sole prop, all right? Raise your hand if you are. Anyone? There, there's a few. Thank you. Please keep in mind, if you're not running payroll for yourself and saying, oh, just Schedule C, right, I'm going to pay income tax. No, it's income tax plus your Schedule SE, which is your payroll tax. So all of a sudden that number gets bigger at year end. And that's painful because you you, you had options as a sole prop, a Schedule C. You didn't have to sell, pay yourself payroll. But if you're profitable as a Schedule C, you're going to have to pay on that income tax. So there's that conversion down the road. We go, man, we've got a good business. We're two to three years. We're into it. We're making money. You should talk to a good consultant that says, Schedule C, is this still the right way? And probably I might make a recommendation to say, are you going to make it in business? Yeah, we are. Well, let's look at the structure of your corporation and move you up to a corporation with that fancy word called a subchapter S. We're not going out there and trying to grab investors, right? This is your baby. Let's make that baby very healthy from a tax perspective. 
if you are going to survive. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the presentation and then of course, many questions you are always welcome to ask. Again, there's our team. Uh, wait, which one am I sharing? I'm, I'm sharing our website, aren't I? Is that right, Rena? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, look, again, there were two flavors of, and again, now you can see QuickBooks, is there a bunch of blue lines on the exterior, right? You see a balance sheet and a P&L? Yes, just wanna make sure. Yeah, okay, thank you, Rena. QuickBooks Desktop, not QuickBooks Online. They kind of act the same, um, but it's two flavors, right? And we start going, okay, this is really important why accounting matters. What you see in front of you, and I'm, I'm assuming you can see my mouse move around, is some history of three, one, two, three years and through February 29th, which is tomorrow, right? And you can see your P&L, 21, 22, 23, and January through February. Now, can you imagine if you're running a business and you've been in business now for three years and you still haven't invoiced yet? Shame on you, right? That's the livelihood of the business. This is what this books are saying. But you need to look at your financials through your accounting software so that you know and, and mind you, this is a sample company. I'm not going to share with you one of our portfolio companies, but you'll know what your cost of goods are versus labor versus uh, materials is my guess. I can tell you this is a very common mistake once I click on expenses. How beautifully organized it is from A to Z. That's not how you run a company. The best way is to consolidate this information and you will never get it in QuickBooks unless you have someone helping you design it. But really these buckets comprise of four things and I have four fingers up. Um, operations, sales and marketing, general administrative and rarely used research and development. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew, and I'm gonna collapse this a little bit, I'm gonna do a little something fancy. So we're, we're talking about why we're doing this. Because if your gross profit margin, right, there's sales for 471,021, your materials and labor cost this, giving you that much gross profit available to you, which happens to represent 36%. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew what comprised of this $98,000? Was it operations, sales and marketing, general administrative? No, it's just A through Z. So shouldn't we bucketize these types of expenses into these three? QuickBooks can do that, any accounting software. It doesn't matter if it's online or desktop, which is what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Accounting can do wonderful things for you. As a business owner, you probably go, good God, our gross profit just went down. I'll use the words, garbage in, garbage out. If we're not using the WIP report correctly for those that need it. Rodolfo, I noticed that you're wearing the construction. Maybe some of your projects, I see your face over at Millwork Prime. Thank you for sharing. If those jobs are longer than a month or could be a year, your WIP report is critical because you will not know what's your gross profit margin. It's more than just payables receivables and payroll, okay? The health of the company, I'm gonna to go to this side. Again, again we're, we haven't talked about job costing, we can, 
But with a quick flip of the switch, there's your job costing. Garbage in, garbage out. Quality input in, able to manage your business. We were talking about estimates and bidding. Uh, let me find it, just bear with me. Estimates versus actuals is somewhere in here. So it is a robust system, just bear with me, I know it's in here somewhere. Um, but you can see it, estimates, oh, there it is, so sorry. If you put your estimates in correctly, I don't think QuickBooks Online has this rich feature as it does on desktop. And for those of you that can share with me your experience, please do so. Raise your hand and say, yeah, I can do it. I'd love to learn too. No, can't do it, Roxanne? Honestly, I've never tried, but I did look at estimates in there because I send out and I, I do my invoices in, in QuickBooks, but I don't do my estimates. And it's I did try to do job estimates in there and I was unable to. But again, I'm I'm not very good with QuickBooks. Yeah, yeah well, I'm not very good with a hammer and nail. <laughs> okay. Nor well, I'm not good with a hammer. I'm sure I'm not good. So it, the, the the capabilities of what you need for job profitability analysis is here. So that way you can determine was job A better or more profitable than job B. And all it required was a click. Now, mind you, this is two, three years of history, and this is a sample company, but here's one job, the total for that job. Job number two, job just call this 2A, 2B. And you start going, hmm, how interesting. Job number one, 32% gross profit margin, 35%. Hey, why don't we put more emphasis and start doing more cottage new construction as opposed to kitchen remodel? Okay. History. That's all we're trying to get at. You, you can even, and, and again, kind of repeating and feel free to ask questions now because the voice gets tired. But if you start looking at seven rows, this being your business, are, are you trending up or down? Well, sales trended up in this one. How much was left over? That This was a little painful. And then you got to say, Why? What was that 137 and where was the composition of it? This one kind of jumped out. Your rents went up. You guys get it, right? You're business owners. You guys manage your money probably better than you manage it here, but everyone forgets, including me. Including me. Questions, please. I'd, I'd rather have a dialogue. I would love to see how to set up all this because I haven't done job costing in in my QuickBooks software. I have Quick QuickBooks online, so if you can show us all that, how to get to this point? You bet. You bet. Okay. Pret pretending we have online, and if you are creating a bill now, online probably how you have to look for those keywords: job costing. So let's just imagine that you went to Alan's Diner and you're just creating a new transaction, right? Enter a bill. It's this little area. Customer. Well, which job did you want it for? That's the key area. Again, I, I'm with almost 100% assurance, 100% assurance, if I may, even if it's QuickBooks online, I'm so sorry. Continue editing, uh, continue editing, doesn't matter. No one, rarely in the smaller market is the class used. And I'd love to just share my face and then pre prep for the next question. What in the world is classes? Does anyone have a feel for it? Is anyone using it? I see, raise your hand if you do. Fantastic, Joyce, you are more than welcome to chime in and then I'll supplement your answer. What's, what's, classes to you? No idea. 
I don't even know if I'm using it correctly. I am using it, but um, we use it mostly for uh, so that our guys uh, can let us know what exactly they're doing because we do a lot of prevailing wage and we have to separate everything um, pay differently. So we use it with uh, we have quick. QuickBooks Online, and we use it combined with time and payroll. So basically, when the guys clock in and out, whatever they put there, it's what it, it gets paid in payroll. So basically, your system is automatic. That's how we use it. I actually have no idea if I'm doing it correctly or not. What I'm hearing described is items as opposed to classes. And I pray that you're using items as opposed to classes in re reality. Feel free to reach out. We'll do a 30-minute consult and either direct you directly mm -hmm. for free, for free, 30-minute consult. Um, but what are classes, right? And then I'll I'll share my screen in a, in a second. So as a contractor or a, a business, you 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 see models, right? You start thinking in terms of, wait a second. Are we working on a commercial site or a residential site, right? Just construction. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know what are your gross profit margins for all of those commercial jobs versus the gross profit margin for all of the residential jobs? Holistically, you go, ah, all right, for next year, because commercial was paying off a lot more, we are gonna spend more time and effort towards that class called commercial and de-emphasize the residential because the gross profit margins are in fact stronger. So you start putting your sales and marketing efforts into it too. Couldn't do that from A to Z as mentioned before. So those bells and whistles are there to make you strong. It's just, takes time, it takes time. Or you pay for a little bit of good guidance. We walk away or a good professional walks away. You guys kind of fumble your way through it. But the more years you keep going into it without any proper consulting, the more dead bodies we uncover. And um, I agree with you. I think like everybody here that I've heard so far uh, with their comments, they're kind of we're kind of in the same boat. Like we want to do the right thing. That's why we bought the software because we want to utilize it. The problem is we don't know how. We don't know how to take advantage of all this, all these, um, uh, all these um categories that QuickBook uh promotes. So I think. If we had like a training, like you just offered the young lady 30 minutes of a consult, I will love the same for myself. I mean, I want to do things right. Yeah. And, um, I want to use it to the best of the ability, you know, QuickBooks. Yeah. There are plenty of consultants. There are plenty of different ways to consult. Um, we're more than willing to help. Um just a little bit of time might help you a long ways. I can do it now and share the screen, but when we go into the minutia, we're losing the person, not losing, but we're de-emphasizing the importance of what happens afterwards of doing it correctly, which I think is a bigger picture because none of us are in business to be in business for a year. We're in this for the long haul. And you want to sleep better at 3 a.m., Accounting might help. You can call it a sedative. I don't know. What a sleeping pill? I don't know. Something to help relax you if done correctly. Or it can be, unfortunately, type feeling every night. Who wants that? I don't. I don't. Any other thoughts before I go back to the screen and try to drill in? Because a dialogue. Rodolfo, any questions? Um, I don't really have a question, but actually what I found helpful is actually um, I've been using QuickBooks Online uh, for not so long, but actually if you jump in into the training, um, they should be able to actually help you online as well based on whatever you actually have a question about, whether you can run a report, whether you have, whether you're stuck in receiving something or whether you're actually using or utilizing QuickBooks Online correctly, 
you could actually jump in on QuickBooks Online and they actually help you live instead of actually waiting on the call and whatnot. And everything's online. You, they could actually show you the screen. You can show them yours. And that actually is really, really helpful. It's a wonderful tool. Thank you for sharing that, Rodolfo. I mean, there are alternatives than a consultant. And sometimes um, you finding ways that are better suited for your learning ability, right? With someone else on the other side. It could be a chat box for all I know, as opposed to a voice or a real person by Zoom. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, there, there are different ways to slice the data and and Cedrin, and, and hopefully that helps, uh, Rodolfo. I think you're as long as you're putting effort into your your books, they will treat you better down the road. If disregarded, you know what the answer is, right? Just keep throwing darts at it year over year over year. Cedrin, you have your hand up. Yes, I want to know, is QuickBooks DACA compliant? Oh, I'm sorry, what, what type of compliance? DACA, DCAA, uh, Federal uh, Defense Accounting System. What, well, what kind of concerns are there in that industry? And I don't, don't want to blatantly say sure. But what what kind of compliance issues do, does that industry have uh, for federal federal contracting purposes? Um, I'm, I'll answer it as I best I can, and and again, if anyone can chime in on this, wonderful. I, I I'm staying in the vein of construction for a bit, but I it could be answering it like certified payroll. Is that? You're, you're digging into yes or? Sir, yes yes oh sure yeah so okay I, i'll only speak in the vein of quick but well i would get third party accounting a third party payroll services for certified payroll do not try to do it by yourself you're you're dealing with fire gotcha thank you oh sure anytime cedric yeah certified payroll don't do it do it right. Do it right. That's really important. Oh, my God. Because certified payroll implies benefits, right? And that, if not if not done correctly, um, I've seen a few contractors who are behind on their benefit payments and didn't recognize it as part of their indirect cost of goods, right? Labor. Um, they were kidding themselves and their balance sheet was over reporting profitability. Just the balance sheet, which had too much cash in it, was because they weren't reporting their certified payroll correctly. Ouch. Ouch. Any other questions as we go and, back to the software? And I'm so sorry. I don't have a raise hand um, button. I'm sorry. I don't see it here. But I just had uh, talking about the certified payroll. Um, do you have a credible company that you recommend to do certified payroll? Because in my company, I do, I submit the um the certified the CPRs, so I do I fill them out and I submit them to my GC. But um, moving forward, I would like to know if I'm doing everything right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, please use third party software. I mean, it's third party. That uh, vendors, the big ADPs, I would go smaller shop and ask them the question, how's your certified payroll? And and get get past the bluff because if it's the salesperson there, oh, our certified payroll is good. Really? Can you bring the certified payroll specialist on the line? And if there's no one shows up, don't mess around with them. Go to the next shop, right? Hoping that helps. They're all pretty good. It's do you have you connected with the right resource internally at the payroll company to make sure your certified payroll is right? But do not you can do it in QuickBooks Desktop. I've seen payroll, but that's getting deep, right? Even I'm be fearful of that, and I run my own payroll, but it's not not needed to be certified. Okay, I'll share my screen again, and um. Hold on, share screen, and back to the software. Any other software-specific thoughts as we go to, it's 3.51. So we're going to cook a little bit faster than we have before. Um, 
stop sharing. I'm going to share my presentation, which I think is this. And okay, key features, right? It's there. It's just a question garbage in, garbage out. Here's some other stuff that you should be able to, regardless of QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop, progress invoicing, we all know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Progress billing, for God's sakes, same thing, right? Uh, concepts, just because you get a big chunk of money in and you haven't performed any work, do you think you should recognize that as revenue? No. Not yet until your team is out there. So I'm going to share with you one thing that QuickBooks can't do, and I'm bear with me for one second, is I'm bringing up the WIP report, and there it is. And I'm going to stop sharing and reshare. Is who uses who needs to use a WIP report? Are there any hands up there other than mine? There you go. Thank you, Karen. So some of your jobs are bigger jobs then, right? QuickBooks cannot do this. You need a form of Excel so that you know what are the inputs. And, you know, let's make everyone smile. You could be working on the up here in Northern California, Oracle Park, right? That's the stadium. SFO Airport, Golden Gate, and then I threw an Empire State Building. For example, if the contract was 100 with, an, with estimated contract cost, right? You made a bid, you got accepted, you're expecting a 40% gross profit margin. Don't worry about the change orders, but it change ordered and made the revised contract 110, right? And then you go, oh, my goodness, we invoiced or billed all 110,000 of it for this project. Uh-uh. Yeah, but guess what? You're liable for it because you haven't performed any actual cost. <laughs> now the specifics. How is the accounting rec going to recognize this? That's getting fancy if you don't use your WIP reports. And I hate to say this part, but it's quite true. Without the WIP report, you don't know your gross profit margin in reality. You may know it at time of original contract, right? But then you've got a big bucket of money came in, $110,000. Exaggerating, of course. Well, pure job borrow. You, you, you didn't buy a boat, thank goodness. But you don't know what, and you haven't performed any expenses. Start taking out the K-1, or as a Schedule C, you're starting to take money out of the bank. It's a mess. If you guys are in the contractor world, you need a good WIP report. So back to... The other presentation, bear with me, the slide itself. Here we go, which covers progress invoicing. Payroll. Yeah, don't mess around with payroll. If, if you've been doing it yourself, shame on you. Pay the money. Pay that before you pay any consultant. That's so risky. Expense tracking is good for job costing, right? You want to allocate it to a job. And if you've set up your classes correctly, you allocate it to a class. So that your P&L, so you can start strategizing for the current year in preparation for the next year. And you can go backwards too. So that you can tell what you were doing prior years, if you'd like effort. But if it was set up correctly, going forward is easier path than not setting it up correctly. Any thoughts, concerns, or? Yeah, yeah I, I have a question. 
you were talking about the expenses could be available to customers. Like what, can, can you give me examples of expenses? Sure, sure. So let's imagine you're t and M, right? Time and materials for those not in construction. Well, you need to, bear with me, maybe I'm not saying this correctly, but shouldn't you be marking up your expenses? If you're using the software correctly, there should be a feature in, in there and say, I want to do a 35% markup on my materials. Now, mind you, we're, we're opening up a new caveat because all of a sudden you've got to get the incremental ca uh, sales tax associated with it, which is, again, painful. That's a different venue of pain called sales tax. But it, hopefully that answers the question, Pilar, is a type of expense it could Labor is an expense, right? Yes. So my company develops software and we generally like charge, you know, time and materials, uh, but we're getting ready to, or hopefully bidding on a project that might have more expenses. So I was curious to know what kind of expenses could be available. Understood. And, and when I share the software again, I think what I'm hearing is budget to actuals for a project going forward. It could be an S or you can create a budget to actual, a budget and that specific type of expense that you're associating with. And it's a great time for me to, to go there. Um, so I'm going to share the QuickBooks screen. And I hope you're finding this of value. And here's QuickBooks, mind you, it's again, but I don't know if it's answering your question perfectly, Pilar, but within this software, you can do budgeting and set up a budget for the coming year because you are anticipating revenues to be X. So if, if in fact, bear with me, I'm going to hide this. Oh, come on now, be nice. If in fact you go, wait a second, how are we doing as a company if we are going, uh, look, look at all the different types of P&Ls you have. Job by class. Hey, you forgot something to class it. Right. Um, but getting very specific budget. To, oh, there it is. How do we do against actuals? So not only are you inputting expenses to come up with a profit and loss that you see on the right hand side. But let's start doing it against budget for future years. And as 2024 develops, are we on budget? Or are we throwing a dart at it? Okay. I'm, I'm hoping that helps, but you create the budget here without trying to go into the, you know, to the minutia of the software. I think that's step two or phase two. If your accounting is good, then you can put a good budget together. But don't expect to do a budget a week after you put your accounting in. This is a process. We're in it for the long haul, the 10 year look viewpoint, not the, I got to slam it in there right now because my taxes are due. Well, shame on us. We, that means accounting was taking a backseat 100% of the time because taxes are due and I'm not ready. Any thoughts, questions? Yes, Ada. I, I think I heard her question differently. So, so I just want to. Um... I agree in case this is what she means. I heard that they will be working on some projects that are going to be coming up. These projects are gonna be bigger. Um, there's gonna be more expenses. And she wants to know if there's any expense that they can charge the client for. Um, and if I understand it correctly based on what she's saying, let's say she is a painter and she's purchasing paint from Lowe's, then the Lowe's paint can be charged back to the client. Is that what you were referring to? Uh, um, I don't know if that's 
uh, if that's something that uh, you were asking or if the question was about the budget. I think that we can apply that example uh, for that. Like if I were to buy any kind of computer equipment for my customer, um, it was good to know, you know, how much of a percentage of gain I, I want to uh, charge for that individual computer. So yeah, I got that. But I, our services are, are mostly software related and we really haven't been providing a whole lot of uh, like uh, computers or parts or stuff like that. But it's good to know for future projects. So this little button, now that I have a little bit data, thank you for your help, I appreciate it. This little button says it's billable. So if you had spent money on software, and I don't know, fine, at, at me, right? Uh, pretending it's a computer company and you spent $2,000 and you want some reimbursement for that billable, that says, I want the 2000, do I want to mark up against it? It is possible and it's automated. But man, you're going deep into the annals of the uh, QuickBooks to get it there if you try to do it yourself. And it's okay, it's doable team, it is doable. It's a question of, do you have the time to get it to that point? So I, I'm hoping this helps answer the question because literally on my end as a consulting firm, oh boy, are we marking this box all the time? And I have a report that says what's not billable and I'm scrutinizing that report inside and out to make sure every <clears throat> penny is caught so that we're not throwing away money. Any thoughts or questions or on this little button. Now, mind you, there's a, an equivalent button on QuickBooks Online. There should be. There should be. So I, I like your example. Uh, for example, I've already provided, you know, a price, like a full price for what the project will be. So I guess I could put that price here on QuickBooks and then as expenses and I bill or something come, in the future, then I can say, hey, so this is how much I've charged, and this is how much the budget was, and this is where we are. Is yes. that correct? It, it is correct. Option B, option B is you may, let's see if they have it here, items list, which is a, a little bit deeper. And, and obviously, this is for construction but you can pick up one of these instead. This is a different way because now you've got t &M materials, right? There's, there's a different way. This is more for construction, can be done, should be done so that you can mark up this one by 10%, this one by 30%, this by 12%. But talk about getting deep into the software. Oh my God, I thought it was just payables and invoice and But as the business gets stronger and bigger, you might as well do it the right way. So are there custom lists that you can download and import and change as needed? The, the answer is yes. It is because this was straight out of the box. This is sample quality built. How much time are you willing to customize this list? and think about how to change it to customize your specific industry. Time consuming. I hear it, but you still have to do it anyway. It has to be done. It has to be done. It has to be done because as the business gets bigger, someone's gonna do it. And then you, you, you know, you've heard it, you pay me now or you pay me later. Okay. Any other I want to introduce Jack mm -hmm. for a moment. I think Roxanne has had her hand raised for a little bit. Oh, yes. Did you have a question? Oh, um, yeah, it was just a transactional question. Um, I noticed I'm I'm a marketing company, so I'm not in construction or anything. So when we send out um a proposal, 
they it's in PandaDoc, a different software. When and and now we usually do for one-off projects, meaning it's just a website or you know some type of campaign. We bill if it's not a monthly ongoing, we do fifty percent upfront and fifty percent at conclusion. Those invoices go out because I create them inside of QuickBooks. But if someone pays monthly, like they just like a standard, they have social media or something like that, that is going through Stripe. All of them eventually end up in the same bank account, but I have to come in and do a reconciliation for Stripe to show mm. that the invoice was paid. And it's just something I don't always get around to. And I looked at my QuickBooks the other day and I saw all of these like outstanding invoices that I know or outstanding, um, prod, you know, like the other 50% wasn't recognized or the monthly ongoing isn't being calculated consistently. Gotcha. I got you. If I may, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see my face a little bit bigger. Oh, okay. And Roxanne, you you brought up some good points, right? There's a lot of talented people out there and they're referred to as millennials who really know how to swing their Excel bat. Yes. So they can download your square report, reconcile it faster than you and I can blink at times. You pay for it, but you do it so much faster you go, that was a time saver. And then what you've said also, Roxanne, was I heard different business models within there. So your revenue buckets really should be differentiated so you can get the granularity and still be able to look at it from a consolidated perspective to see how did the business do? But how about the different business lines and the revenue profitability against each one of those? That to me is a well-designed machine. We don't have that. <laughs> so, yeah, yet. Yet, yet. But if you're spending too much time on reconciliation, I'll tell you a very quick story. Remember the picture of the four people in our team? There's many, many, many people like that. Uh, Nika, who's been with me for six years, uh, one of our clients goes, Ed? He says, yeah. We need, we need help. We've got this Excel spreadsheet. It's a million rows. I'm like, I said, Nika? She goes, yeah. Can, can you look at that million rows and split out 600,000 of them over this one? She goes, okay. And gets it done, right? And gets it done. That's a different mindset. That's a real deep accountant who understands what they're looking for, how to split the data, and then upload it correctly to your software. That's talent. Right. Any other thoughts as we're getting close to? Hi, Ed. It's, it's David here from Inski Construction. How are you? Now, just a question. I've seen on your report uh, when you've shown us the expenses and just beside each expense line, there was a, I think like it's called class code. Okay. Yes. So I, I have... Um, QuickBooks Online, and obviously all the expenses are kind of preset in charts of accounts, uh, but the class codes are not added there. So my question is, where do we find the information for the class codes and in what way the class codes, if I name it correctly, what, in what way they help us besides yeah. already having name for expense? Yes, yes. Okay. Two questions in there. I'll address both. Maybe there's three. Uh, in QuickBooks Online, we're, I always go, where's classes? Where's classes? And QuickBooks Online, we're looking at desktop. You have to turn it on. Or if you're buying such a cheap version, you didn't even are allowed to have classes. So it's there in the upper right-hand section under the gears for online or desktop where uh, list, let's see, a little better, there it is, class list. And then question number two, right? These happen to be the class list. I don't think it's designed correctly on this, incidentally, just FYI. An opinion, Intuit might counter me, but that's okay. But if you look at a profit and loss, let's see if, how they're, they've done it. And let's just look at a P&L. 
Let's get rid of, make it less confusing. Let's make it seven rows. All right? And then we go by class. A, oops, there it is. All of a sudden, you've got different verticals. I would rather prefer it be industry type or different types of, of uh, business models, not necessarily done this way. I, I just don't think this is right. And if you notice, some of it's unclassed. I'm hoping that answers your question, David. Oh, I'm so sorry, da David? Uh, David, yes. David, thank you, So, so, so um, no, I think my question is, so let's say, let's say, um, take for example, advertising, right? Expense, just if you go back and we have advertising and then there is um, a code 6020, right? Now, what is this refers to and how this help, help helps us? Um, because, I mean, in my software, I don't have any class codes showing up here on, on, on any of the expenses. Um, but I've heard that um, they they fit some purpose, right? Yeah, they do. They do. And I'm going to answer it long-winded as quickly as I can, unfortunately, is I'll share a P&L as to what the numbers are, not necessarily the classes. If you guys want me to talk classes, I will. But I'm going to go very quickly and put P&L on one side and balance sheet on the other, right? And so <laughs> when you see four digits, I heard you say 6,000 and you see my mouse. The 6,000 are really these areas. Oh, look at that, there's the 6,000. Whereas the 4,000s are right here. The 5,000s are here. The 1,000s, which are not labeled, or they might be. Nope, they're not, are, are the, are uh, the, so sorry, so sorry, the assets, 2,000 are liabilities, 3,000 are equity, four, five, six. Okay. If that helps, if that helps, to be, right? There's a purpose for those two words. Uh, uh can I say something that my bookkeeper said to me? She said that the numbers uh, that the numbers help to classify by types. So uh, so yeah, like you just said, like the four thousand, and you can actually create a new category starting at forty one eleven. Then it'll be up there, like if, if it needs to be subdivided. But she's done that to my software. So that helped explain the, the why of the numbers, the, the classification. Right, but how, how that, that's great, but how, how I can use the numbers to make it easier for me? I mean, because now I don't see kind of a difference because if I want to find expense, I just type it in, computer supplies, and it's there. So how does the number then make it easier or is there in what way suppose that you have two computer supply companies then you you start at for example 6050 for one and 6051 for the other and they're right next to each other and classified on the six zero numbers okay okay, okay. that that helps in, in some ways for and i think you're 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 Holly, the bookkeeper, is on track, right? Is on track. I, I might make some subtle suggestions, but to, to go a little bit deeper, David, is in the 6,000s, which you can see. And you remember, you may remember me saying the four big buckets, operations, sales and marketing, general administrative. Well, shouldn't operations be 6,100-ish? The sales and marketing is 6,300-ish or general administrative 6,500. So all of a sudden, your accounting, when given to the tax preparer, they go, I'm going to charge them less because I, I can see the clarity of what they're doing and I have confidence to sign off on their tax return. 
So it is accounting talk amongst us, um, but it's a, it's a different world, right? In terms of what's the purpose of those numbers. Would you repeat the, the, the code for the operations? Yes, of course. Um, for us internally, 6,100XX is for operations. 6,300 or 63XX is for sales and marketing, which is collapsible, right? 65XX, 6,500 is GNA. So you add them uh, yourself manually? Yes. yes. All right. So that's what I want to know. So it's not that the software actually generates the numbers. You have to. All right. Okay. So, so Dawid, um, one of the things, and I started using those codes, and one of the things that I use them for is, so when we get bills in, um, each one of those bills gets stamped and goes through an approval process. So the person that when they when those bills come in, she stamps the bill. She's putting the dollar amount in that in that little stamped area that we're stamping the bill on. And instead of her writing down what everything is for, she keeps a, a cheap sheet uh, by her desk, and then she'll write in that code. And then when it goes to the person that's that you know either purchase the material or equipment or whatnot or rental. It'll go to that person for the approval. And then at the same time that they're approving it, they have to um, approve that, hey, it was it was for that use. And they use that code to determine that rather than writing every the whole thing down. All right. OK, I see. So it's kind of like um, more for internal use, right? Yes. It's like a, a short language of classifying that, like expenses or something. Yes. Right. Thank you, Rod, for saying that. Thank you. It's an internal control that makes it easier to communicate so that there's no faux pas, errors, and posting a marketing expense into a GNA bucket. And is there um so so just going okay, I, I want I don't want to like put too much time on spend too much time on it. So just just to um summarize. We can come up with any numbers we want. There's no certain way of doing it, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Recommended, but the more meaningful to you because you created them. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Basic navigation through a sample company. I think we're kind of doing that. Is there a hand up in the air that says, "I oh, there you go, Rod. Go right ahead. What What do you need, sir?" So I'm I'm kind of jumping off a little bit because we, you we touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, the S one of the things that I have major struggles in in QuickBooks is the estimating component, and and then also uh, the retainage component. And I found something where you know we have retainage set up, but it's been set up incorrectly. Yeah, and so it altered my P and L based off of the way that it's set up. Of course, I hear you loud and clear. I'll address the easier of the two, which was the retainage, right? There should be a separate area in your balance sheets should be AR retainage so that you don't expect it right away and you expect it after everyone signed off on the contract. So I would go into your chart of accounts and create, in this particular case, a 1,000. Oh, my goodness, there it is. All right. I'm hoping that helps, Rod. So yeah. there's a little bit deeper answer that might take longer, but it's better to see your books. But depending on how you code the invoice, probably 10% of it should be bucketized into retention. So I see that you have the retentions receivables there. Um, you should also have retention. You should have two of them, correct? No, one so is you, normal receivables. The other is retention receivable. Okay. Can, can you, um, double click on that so that I can see the setup on it? Wonderful, man. This guy, see, <clears throat> you're an advanced user. I can already tell. So it depends, uh, the current asset. Okay. Uh, where is it? The mapping of where it goes to. Shame on me. Hold on. 
Um, so it's it's hitting other current assets. Well, it's coming. The account yeah. tap is your other current assets. Well, it is. It is okay. So okay. I, I was looking for something else, but yeah, this is correct. Let's, let's see. It, it should be current regardless, in my opinion. I would not make it non-current, Rod. Okay. Okay. Any the other one, the estimating. Talk about a beast, right? For me, but if you're doing estimating inside QuickBooks, you would be one of the rare few beasts. You'd be one of the rare few people that are actually doing it. Yeah. And and are you doing your estimating inside QuickBooks? I I tell you what, I started, and it it just it, it kind of messed everything up. So, <laughs> I to be honest, I I've actually been looking at converting or switching out of. QuickBooks and going into um, another program into uh, Sage uh, Contractor 100. Okay. This might save you a little bit of time, Rod. No. <laughs> I think you find a certain element just for estimating and feed that data into your existing QuickBooks desktop. I'm assuming your desktop, not online. C correct. I'm I'm desktop. Okay. Now, the, the only thing that that is swaying me and i i understand what you're saying and and i i do the estimates outside now but the one thing that's swaying me away from that is the fact that you know in, in that other program you're um what should i say there's a lot more controls that you have that you can keep with the job itself such as rfis and stuff like that that can all stay in there and it and it documents all of that stuff on the dates that you're actually doing it so that you have everything kind of in order. I, and, I, and so it has some some other strengths that that are hard to kind of replicate in in QuickBooks. I agree with you wholeheartedly. So now I'm swaying you a little bit more towards possibly. <laughs> possibly but you're giving up a lot in what your existing infrastructure looks like and the sales consultant and sage is just they're salivating right now right oh yeah because the consulting fees are going to be high i would say talk to a consultant that says what are my problems and let's address let that consultant address it and see, does it make sense to stay where you're at plus something else or go ahead and go to Sage and go ahead and let the guy salivate some more? Because I know you're it's going to be a lot more expensive. And here come the consulting fees. And a lot of times those consultants do not really give you enough consulting and you're deep into it for a year and you've lost operational capacity. Yeah. We are coming close to five minutes left. You are always welcome to reach out. Let me share my screen. Reporting and analysis, I think we kind of get the concepts of it. I pray that you guys are okay. Some basic reports. And then lastly, oh, the big three. Got to know where your cash is, right? I don't know if we need to go into this cash flow review. Where did the money go? Well, this report will tell you, but really focus in on these two and the health of your balance sheet. We never talked about the current ratio, the working capital, and all that important stuff. Garbage in, you won't know your working capital. or your current ratio. Contractor reports that are available to you. Online, I, I can't speak about construction as well. Worth mentioning, there are some stuff that can make you stronger. And with only five minutes left, look, it will make you accurate and efficient in your financial management. You're better organized. You might be able to do streamlined billing, job costing, financial insights. 
We're, your business is in it for the long haul, not a, how do I save 50 bucks, 100 bucks? If you're doing 300,000, come on, $50? That either means your margins are really thin and you're not making a lot of money or just kind of misdirected, in my humble opinion, as to where expenses can be. Thank you. Um, feel free to reach out. There's my phone number. Either myself or one of my team members can assist you. And uh, good luck for 2024. Thank you, Ed, for that wonderful presentation. It was great hearing you all interact with one another and hopefully you guys got your questions answered and everything.